What's going on, Lee Gen Beasts? It's your boy, Matty Ice, Leads for Locals. Boy, do I have a fun one for you today. We're going to be doing something that I thought would be pretty easy and basic, but apparently not, and that's why I'm making a video on it. It is how to integrate and sync your Outlook calendar to go high level. It is a lot more complicated than Google Calendar for whatever reason. I have no idea why. So I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do this if you're doing this just for your own business and sub account or if you are a SaaS agency there's a few more steps involved um it's not it's not as bad as if uh, you're doing this for your own sub account but yeah uh, make sure you stick to the end you don't want to miss any steps otherwise it's probably not going to work so my only ask as usual if you find the video helpful smash that like button make sure you subscribe check out the links in the description always have good additional training for you guys there and if you don't have Go High Level yet, if you wouldn't mind, go through my affiliate link. It does help support the channel. You guys are awesome. Let's rock and roll. Oh, man, this is going to be fun. All right. So to do this efficiently, uh, I have two tabs of Go High Level open. You're probably only going to need to do that if you're a SaaS agency and you have calendars set up for your clients or if you have multiple calendars in your sub account. You're going to want to, uh, basically what we have to do is take our regular calendars and kind of duplicate them into a team calendar. Uh, I don't know why, because Outlook can only be integrated with team calendars, not just regular calendars. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm in my SaaS product here. Let's go to settings. We're going to go down to calendars. So typically when you make the calendar over here on the, on the left, Right here, new calendar, it's just a regular new calendar. It's unassigned, but that does not work for Outlook. You have to have this right here, which is a team calendar. So first thing you need to do is click add group. And, and actually I'm gonna do this on the second tab here because I'm gonna go back and forth. Basically the reason I do this, uh, I do two tabs is so I can copy and paste what's in the current calendars into the new team calendars, just so it's faster. So uh, let's open up calendars on the second tab. All right, let's click add group. All right, the name. You want to make sure that this is relevant because this is going to show up if you either <clears throat> use the URL for the calendars or if you put the calendar on a funnel step, which is what I do. This group name, the description, and all that stuff, uh, all this. I don't. I don't think the URL shows up, but uh, the group name and description does show up. So you want to make sure this is relevant to whoever is visiting or whoever's booking an appointment. So in this case, I'm going to put. Uh, business funding and credit. Uh, well, I'll just do one because I already have it here. All right. And then it's going to be to, you know, what's this call going to be about? It's going to be to discuss your business funding and credit options. All right. I don't think the, the, the URL here really matters because again, unless you're using the URL, but I like to put my calendars on a funnel step. So we're going to click save. And you'll notice here we have now a team calendar, like we have the group set up, I should say, not the calendar, because now we have to create the calendar. And in my case, I had to replicate six different calendars. It didn't take that long. It's just all of the additional steps, man. It's just kind of a pain. Uh, so what we need to do now is, uh, so I'm going to go back to this first tab. I'm going to use the ERC qualification one here as an example. We're going to click the three little dots if it'll let me. Apparently, Go High Level is not having a, yeah, apparently they weren't in the mood. All right, so I had to refresh. All right, so we're going to click the three little dots, click edit. All right, so we pull that up. Wow, please take your time. <laughs> All right, so I'm basically just going to copy and paste this over. Uh, now, let's see here. Uh, we're going to click on new calendar. We're in the second tab. So now we're actually creating the calendar, uh, the team calendar inside the group. Now, when I say team calendar, you don't necessarily have to have a team. You're going to add yourself here in a second as a team member, but you can do this even if you don't have a team. Like this is just what you have to do to connect Outlook. All right. Uh, I'm going to paste that in. And then what I did is just put calendar at the end. So I have the unassigned calendars for Google Calendar. That's just ERC qualification. And then my team calendar for ERC is ERC qualification calendar. The reason you want to separate this is so you can tell the difference uh, when you are selecting the calendar on the funnel step, you're adding it to an uh, automation, 
right? You want to know which one is the regular unassigned calendars and which one are your team calendars. So I just put calendar here at the end of it. Actually, I'm going to put one now because I already have this. All right, the description, I'm just going to copy and paste from my original calendar. Again, you want to make sure that this stuff is relevant to whoever is booking the appointment. All right, uh, I think I just put ERC. I'm just going to put ERC here. It doesn't matter if I don't use the, the, uh, the URL. Uh, all right, meet or appointment title. I usually put, I'll leave the contact name and then I'll put ERC specialist, funding specialist, whatever kind of specialist you are. Um, I usually just put that. All right, now it won't let us continue until we add a user here. Now we click add user. If you're doing this for your sub account, you might already have a user account here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it, but I'm gonna show you how to set that up. If when you select user and you don't see your name in the drop down here, I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. You need to basically add yourself as a staff member to the sub account. I know guys, look, don't, don't shoot the messenger here, okay? Don't get mad at me. This is just uh, what you have to do, all right? Uh, and if you have an easier way, please drop it down in the comments. I'd love to see it and I'll, I'll make another video. All right, but this is how um, I know how to do it. So uh, if we click on uh, my staff right here, all right, we're in settings. All right, um, I already have an account set up here, but uh, what you'll do is click add employee and then just create user, in, you know, name, email, phone number. I think if you use the same email address that you use to sign up to go high level, that should work. I used a G I, I used my Gmail account. I used a separate email for it. I don't remember why. I think it's just because it didn't work uh, with the other email or like my original email and I had issues with it. So I use a separate email than my go high level login email. It's up to you. Just create an account for yourself. It'll show up right here. Okay, great. Now, when we go back uh, to our team calendar here, you should like, you might need to refresh the page, but you'll be able to add yourself as a user here. Now, if you're doing this for your sub account, then, uh, well, we're not done yet, but uh, it's not really an issue. Like one of the questions I had before was, well, if we're doing this for SaaS clients, you know, we don't want to be taking appointments for our clients, right? We don't want our username on there, uh, but that won't be the case because you're not automatically added as a staff member in new sub accounts. So you don't have to worry about that, fortunately, because that would be a pain. All right, we're going to save and continue. Now, this stuff is just the regular calendar stuff. I usually do 30 minute buffer time. I'll do eight appointments a day. We'll do a, a 10 days for the date range and minimum scheduling notice one day. You choose your days and time available. All right, save and continue. If you want to use a, uh, I actually use a custom calendar form. You don't have to. If you leave it on none or custom form, it'll just be name, email, phone number uh, on when they, uh, after they select their day and time. So it's up to you. Uh, you can send notifications to the contact who books the appointment. You can send it to yourself or your clients as well. I have an appointment confirmation and reminder automation that I use. So I don't usually, um, I will I will select this one right here, but usually I just leave this unchecked because I have the automation that goes out. Now the email address here, it's gonna be your email address or if you do this for clients, what I like to do is use custom values. I'm not gonna go into how custom values work. That's way too long. I already have additional training on that. Check it out in the description. I have an entire Go High Level playlist. All right, uh, let's see, what am I doing? Uh, so we're gonna go to confirmation. I'm just gonna grab this custom value here that I use for notif uh, the notification email. I usually do click allow Google Calendar, but I don't think this will do anything since we're using Outlook, but I check it anyways. All right. Assign contacts to the respective calendar team members. I do usually check that and I will check this. If they're already, if the contact is already assigned to a team member, it will skip the assignment. All right, so that, uh, that contact stays with the original user. Again, if you don't have a team, then this, that, that doesn't really matter. Now, uh, if you're just getting started with calendars, I would say keep it simple and use just a custom thank you message, type it out right here. I actually have an appointment confirmation stage or a step in my funnel. And I, I use that for my clients. Again, I use a custom value for it. So I'm going to paste that into form direct, uh, uh, form submit redirect. So it's going to automatically redirect people to my confirmation page uh, after someone books an appointment. And we're going to click complete. Okay, the calendar is done. Now we need to actually connect Outlook to go high level. Now, 
<laughs> because I have a different email address, uh, when, when I created, uh, you know, the thing for my staff here, I'm going to log out really quick. I'm going to log into this account and you'll see what the next step is. All right. Be right back. Okay. <clears throat> so we're logged into my account now, my staff account. All right. Uh, when you do that, you should see profile right here. Now, if you, again, if you already see this, then you don't have to sign out and use a different email address and all that, but you need to click on the profile tab right here. Cause this is where you actually connect outlook to go high level. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and boom, it's right here. Now I already did this. You're just going to click connect. You're going to select the outlook email address with the calendar and all that stuff. You're going to approve the like request for access and all that stuff. Okay. You do that. And then um, your email address will show up right here. And then on the right hand side where it says con uh, calendar configuration, uh, you're going to want to click edit and then actually select the email address for Outlook and then click save and you're good. You have now integrated Outlook to your calendars. We're not done yet. You got to make sure that, well, I suppose if you're just doing this for your business and you're not doing this for clients, then I, you're, you're, you should be good unless you're using your calendars in a funnel. So let, let me show you that really quick because uh, that's what I do. Uh, so here, let, let's, uh, let me go to my, see if I can switch to my SaaS product here. There we go. All right. Uh, cause you want to make sure that the team calendar is on your funnel page, not your regular calendars. That's important. Otherwise, what's the point of doing any of this? What, what's the, you, you have to change the, uh, you have to change the calendar on the page. So if you have your calendars in a funnel, uh, we're going to go to sites, funnels, click on the funnel. I'm going to go to my appointment calendar page right here. We're going to open this up in a new tab. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. It's been lagging lately. Of course that took forever. <laughs> All right. So, Calendar shows up. All right, we're going to click the calendar. We're going to scroll down. And right here where it says calendar, you're going to select the actual team calendar that you just created. Otherwise, it will get booked on your regular calendars, assuming you already have this. If you're starting from scratch, then just uh, what you would do is uh, click on elements, add element, and then find the calendar option. And then you would do the same exact thing I just showed you. All right, uh, from there, uh, if you have appointment automations, uh, obviously up here at the top right, make sure you click save. All right. Let's get rid of that because I already did this in my SaaS product. Uh, if you have appointment automations, make sure you add them as a, uh, the new team calendar as a uh, workflow trigger in that automation. Uh, of course, they're locked. I got to log back into my actual account. One second. All right, we're in. Yeah, I actually uh, locked the automations in my SaaS product because I found out that some people have been signing up and then swiping the automations and putting them into their own Go High Level account. Not cool. Anyways, all right, we're going to go to uh, just go to your appointment uh, workflow. So I got a confirmation and reminder here, but just basic stuff. And you want to, you'll notice I have two triggers now. So originally I just had this one appointment one. This is the regular unassigned calendar that I had for my clients. So uh, they can connect their Google calendar very easily to it. And then that was it. But now uh, I added an additional trigger here for the team calendar. Uh, so regardless of which one they use, it, it's, it's always going to trigger the confirmation reminder, uh, you know, 24 hour reminder, one hour reminder. So the uh, you add a new workflow trigger. I'll just show you what, what this one is. So it's going to be appointment status. Event type is normal. In the calendar, you're going to select the new team calendar that you just created. Uh, add another filter. The status is going to be confirmed. You save trigger up here at the top right. Click save. Good to go. Holy smokes. A lot of stuff. So not really complicated. It's just a lot of steps. And uh, I'm not really sure why that's so much more complicated than Google Calendar because you literally sign into Google you select the calendar, you go to your calendar and go high level, select that, that calendar, like you sync it. And then that's it. That's literally all you have to do. Uh, I don't know why all these other steps are required for Outlook, but it is what it is. So now you know how to integrate your Outlook calendar into go high level.
please, if you have an easier, faster way of doing this, let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Uh, but this is how I know how to do it right now. So hope you guys are crushing it. I'll talk to you in the next one. Matty Ice is out.